Hello everybody, Sanier, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I wanna talk about how the first CRISPR genome edited drug could be out potentially for the year 2023. We are in the year 2022. We are halfway past halfway into it in the month seventh of the year. And in just a couple of months, we will have for the first time ever, FDA submissions approval documents approved by CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex submitted to the FDA. Everything is on track for making all of this happen as we've seen from the quarterly earnings call from both companies, not just Vertex, but also CRISPR Therapeutics. Every single time they've talked about it, even in the innovation day that happened a couple of weeks ago from CRISPR Therapeutics, they kept saying that end of 2022 will be the submissions for those documents. And just as a reminder, we're talking of the program CTX001, or known today as Hexacell, 40% owned by CRISPR Therapeutics, 60% owned by Vertex. What that means is that, for example, if they make a billion dollars in sales, then you have 600 million going to Vertex, and of course, 400 million going to CRISPR Therapeutics, which is no joke. I mean, people think, you know, having less than 50 is bad. Look, 40 is still good, right? For one program, that really has nothing, nothing in market for CRISPR. There is nothing in the markets for CRISPR. And that's what this article is talking about, right? The first CRISPR genome edited drug designed to treat blood disorders could be in the market by 2023. Here's what it means for the future of the, the drug development. And obviously they're going over the history here, the collaboration, how much Vertex had to put up, obviously in the billion dollars range. Um, and of course they had to buy additional $1.1 billion for additional share of that program. Uh, from obviously to up to now 60% the Vertex owns. And obviously, you know, you, you got to wonder, you know, why would a company like Vertex, which is a big pharma company, make no mistake, they have a couple of programs, they've been successful in the past, they're still successful. In fact, a lot of CRISPR investors these days, they're big on Vertex, right? They're, they're telling me, you know what, don't worry about these pure CRISPR plays, look out for these pharma companies, think of like Moderna, think of Pfizer, think of, of course, Vertex, who are using CRISPR, part of the tools they use on a daily daily basis for other programs, right? Which is amazing, right? Obviously, Moderna with their mRNA technology and Pfizer obviously doing what they did in the recent two, three years. Obviously, we all saw what they were able to do. And of course, Pfizer is not, not of a joke of a company. And I think Vertex could be up there. You know, they could crack that top two, top three. And I think they could do really, really a lot of damage with just this program, right? And this article here goes over the potential, that goes over the history, talks about the current program data that they've gotten, especially since the innovation day. Uh, and of course, drug, let's, let's read out this out. I think this is important. There are about 20 cell and gene therapies, although none based on CRISPR, that have received FDA approval to date. According to MIT's drug development program, more than 60 gene and cell therapies could be on the U.S. market by 2030. And that could lead to a transformation in how we think about incurable conditions with genome and cell therapies potentially being used to treat everything from rare disease to HIV to heart diseases. Of course, that's a important topic as well. Leading cause of death in America or in Canada is heart disease. I think it would make sense to have these types of genome editing program covering this type of disease, which is the heart disease world, which obviously is untreated for many, many folks out there. So drug discovery is a long, unpredictable process, but the impact that genome editing can make in the drug development and how we can think of the disease is already clear. As John Moore, CSO at Biotech Horizon, Horizon Discovery said in 2016, the targets we're finding with CRISPR are going to quite guide the drugs coming out in the 2020s. That was in 2016. The early potential of XSL is just six years later would suggest that uh, that is a reasonable bet. And I totally agree with uh, the thesis here in this article. Uh, I think it's amazing. I think the FDA will have no choice to looking at this program, looking at CRISPR as a whole. Again, I've, I've repeated this a couple of times in the previous videos, but I think it's important to mention that Bluebird got unanimous support 13-0 by the FDA, whatever that means, right? It's not FDA approved, but it is unanimous support. Whatever that means, we all know in this space, and even if you're not even, you know, looking into CRISPR specifically, you've spent enough hours and time into it, 
I think just a couple of Google searches will reveal to you very fast that Bluebird is really, you know, a minor compared to what CRISPR can do. Uh, specific CRISPR therapeutics, for example, uh, I mean, they have their own flaws. You know, CRISPR therapeutics has its own flaws. You know, we talk about, you know, translocations. We talk about uh, offsets and so on. But the idea that, you know, you're comparing that with a technology like a company like Bluebird, uh, and they're getting unanimous support. And I can only imagine that the FDA is going to look seriously, seriously at Hexacell by the end of this year. I think this is going to be amazing. Imagine if you had this pill, you know, you just ingest it, and that's it. You're blue, you know, you're beta thalassemia or your sickle cell disease disorder is gone, you know. Imagine if you do that for other diseases, you know. Imagine if you're able to do that with other type of disease. Now, of course, this is an ex vivo approach, so this is not as simple as just getting a, a pill out there, you know, there is an ex vivo approach to it. But of course, there's companies working on in vivo for sickle cell disease and so on. And of course, we've seen in vivo's success with NTLA, not a blood disorder, but of course, the ATTR disease out there. So lots of great things coming, guys. I'm very, very, very excited. Uh, I wanted to make this video on a beautiful Sunday here, here in Montreal. I'm heading back in Toronto here shortly. I wanted to make this quick video for you guys. Going over this company, uh, Fast Company's article here talking about CRISPR first genome editing drug. I think it's just exciting. I love it. Love the energy. This year, obviously, the stock market has gone down. It's been declining the stock market crash. But everything else around it, right? Caribou's data, NTLA further data. You know, you see CRISPR Therapeutics, you know, officializing their programs for heart diseases and so on. Uh, and we're going to get a, potentially the type 1 diabetes data from there on. And then you see Beam Therapeutics going forward there with their Beam 101 and so on. So lots of exciting things coming. You know, of course, there's some weird things coming up like Verve Therapeutics raising cash at this, you know, just yesterday over Friday, we, we, we saw that. I mean, it was a weird move, but it is what it is. Lots of weird move, but it is an exciting time to be in this space, guys. And you can assure that we will be covering these types of news in this channel. I'm going to end this video like this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a beautiful time with your friends, family, and community on this beautiful Sunday. Like this video, fan value. Subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you guys in Toronto in tomorrow's video. Thank you.